Here we go, another edition of Sports Medicine Weekly on this Saturday morning. I'm Steve Cashel, Chicago Bulls radio host. And sitting in this week for Dr. Brian Cole, my usual co-host, is Dr. Greg Nicholson. He is an orthopedic surgeon from Midwest Orthopedics at Rush, one of the team doctors for the Chicago White Sox and Chicago Bulls, amongst other teams. Dr. Greg, thanks so much for uh, helping us out this week. Good morning, Steve. It's great to be here. Wow. Uh, you're a busy guy, as busy as Dr. Cole, I know, right? It, it's that time of year. What's uh, what's walking into the office? I mean, and how many other teams do you uh, cover? We do uh, also cover the Chicago Dogs, which is an independent baseball team. Uh, we take care of DePaul. Uh, my partner, Brian Forsythe, takes care of the Chicago Fire uh, we have a number of high schools, and it's obviously high school football season. We've got the the Bulls cranking up. We've got the end of the baseball season, and we got hockey going. So uh, it's a great time of year if you're a sports fan. Absolutely. Uh, and you guys are busy. I mean, not only do you do your, I want to say 9 to 5, but it's probably 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. job, right, where you see 80 patients in a day. I know Dr. Cole has told me he does uh, every now and then. But uh, and then you've got to work with the teams as well, right? What kind of grind is that? You know, it's it's a wonderful grind if you want to think about it. It makes us better doctors for all our patients because these are high-level athletes uh, who have special talents and special needs. But it also lets us uh, translate that, that down to the weekend warrior. So uh, it's it's a privilege to do it, and we, we love doing it. Our producer is Shane Reardon. Our coordinating producer is Teresa Ann Seeger. Again, Steve Cashel with Dr. Greg Nicholson. Filling in this week for Dr. Brian Cole. Let's start, though, with uh, the Chicago Bulls. And, uh, boy, this hits us like a ton of bricks, right? I mean, training camp began, uh, what, 10 days ago? And all of a sudden, uh, just three days into training camp, Bulls star, he may be the best player on the team eventually, if he's not now, Larry Markin in the second-year player from Finland, uh, who had a terrific rookie year last year, suffers a high-grade lateral right elbow sprain. And... Um, Boy, it could be out six to eight weeks, Dr. Nicholson. And let's talk about how it happened, though, because that, that was the big question. I kept being asked by all my friends and people and, you know, everyone saying, how could such a thing happen? And Larry, a couple of days after, said, well, I guess I was going up for a rebound, and it got tangled up a little bit. He really doesn't know exactly. He felt fine. I think he even continued on. And then he said he woke up in the uh, middle of the night. And what happens? It just gets inflamed? Uh yeah. You know, you got the adrenaline pumping. You're in practice. Uh, I think a lot of injuries like this present the next day. Uh, we see it a lot with the White Sox. Guys come in after that day. You, they didn't report it to the trainer that night. Uh, I think Lowry did hurt the elbow. He knew he did something. The next day, he was a little stiff. And that's just an inflammatory reaction. Now you have to sort out. You got to kind of be a detective yeah. and, and go back and say what exactly happened. So, uh, I think what happened, you know, and you and I have talked about this in the past, uh, like on some Bulls pregame, you know, basketball, those arms are out away from your body. You're playing defense or you're going up for a rebound. So your arm can get pulled or trapped in a in a way you you don't expect. So shoulders and elbows uh, can be injured. Uh, it sounds as if he got, you know, lodged between two people, probably one going up, one going down. He's going up. Uh, these guys are incredibly powerful. He's seven foot tall. Uh, and obviously the the area of injuries on the outside part of the elbow, you know, they're calling it a high-grade lateral sprain. Now, I think our, our listeners out there are very in tune with Tommy John surgery right. and ulnar collateral ligament injuries in pitchers. Now, that's on the inside part of the elbow. So this is on the outside. So it's the exact opposite side. Now, the elbow is one of the most tightly mated joints in our body. And it is more of a hinge joint uh, with obviously the the ability to turn your forearm over. Uh, but those type of sprains are inherently stable because of the bony, the bony issues. So if you identify it correctly, you immobilize it correctly, then get some range of motion going, th- this is going to heal uneventfully. It's just uh, a disappointing because it's occurred – right at the the start of training camp and he's a a young guy and as you said in the in the intro he's he's going to be a a key cog in the in the bulls uh now and in their future talking about Larry Market and his high grade lateral right elbow sprain the bulls power forward 
out for six to eight weeks uh, here in his second season with the Chicago Bulls. Again, I'm Steve Cashel with Dr. Greg Nicholson sitting in this week for Dr. Brian Cole, our show of Sports Medicine Weekly. So how typically is an injury like this treated then, Doc? Well, the key is the athlete being honest with you and trying to uh, tell you what might have happened. Second thing, good physical examination. And the training staff was right there. I'm sure uh, Brian Cole was on it. I've got world-class partners uh, in, in hand and shoulder and elbow, uh, knee, foot, uh, back, spine, whatever. And then the key is, you know, x-rays, obviously, and then an MRI. This is soft tissue injury by and large, and an MRI is a wonderful uh, imaging modality to look at soft tissue. And you can see the zone of inflammation. So you'll see that. Is it in the muscle? Is it in the tendon insertion? Is it more in the ligament? Is there some fluid in the joint? Where, where is that reactive inflammation? So a little bit like, uh, you know, Dr. Sherlock Holmes, you're deducing what might have happened. You determine what that injury is, what the, they're calling it a high grade, uh, which means there are some damage to the ligament fibers. Uh, but he's got a stable elbow. And if, like uh, we said, if we treat it appropriately, uh, that soft tissue injury is going to heal. So the MRI gives you tremendous anatomic knowledge and it also gives you some expectation for both treatment prognosis and time frame is that ice right away 24 hours and then continued ice throughout the six eight weeks or the inflammation is down and then it just kind of try to keep it because i know they, they immobilized right is that what they're calling it well they'll there'll be early immobilization to let the soft tissue injury uh recede if you will swelling is going to max out after any injury at about 48 hours okay uh Ice is where you need that. Now, as you move forward, you're going to use uh, some warm, moist heat to, to warm those muscles up, warm that joint up. Make sure you get the, your motion back in a safe range. Remember what we said. Um, this probably was a, a force to the pulling your elbow to the inside or a little bit of a hyperextension injury. So you want to keep it in a safe range uh, as it heals. Then use ice after uh, that training activity as we move forward. Um, and obviously, look, inflammation is a healing reaction, right? Yeah. You, you need it, but you, early on it's an injury reaction. So, um, like, think about a, an athlete who has a medial collateral ligament injury to his knee. His ACL is fine. His knee is stable. It hurts. So he has, he has a hard time stopping and cutting. Uh, think of it that way for the elbow. It's one of the side ligaments. He's going to be a little tender. We have to protect that, keep his motion control the inflammation, and then rehab him appropriately. And then you get back to sports-specific activity, basketball activity. All right, that's the story on Larry Markkinen. And also Denzel Valentine, speaking of the Bulls, he sustained a left ankle sprain that's expected to keep him out one to two weeks. That was earlier uh, in the uh, training camp as well. Last year, Valentine had surgery on that same left ankle after multiple sprains during his rookie season. So tell me about an ankle sprain like this. Is this something that never goes away, or can it heal 100%? Well, I think that's why they did the surgery. In reality, he was struggling with it, you know. And let's face it, basketball players are so prone to ankle sprains. It's probably the most common injury they get from, you know, eighth-grade basketball till Denzel's time. Uh, the surgery was there to stabilize the ankle. I'm sure this is a little bit of a uh, tweak uh, being out a, a, a week to two weeks, they're probably just being cautious and controlling any reactive inflammation. Uh, I think your point's a good one. If you're a high-level basketball player, do, do ankle sprains ever go away? I think the risk never goes away. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And then uh, we've got uh, one other Bulls player, Jabari Parker, coming off a, a double ACL tear. Uh, Dr. Cole and I constantly talk about re-tear rate of ACLs, and maybe especially in the NBA. So, uh, But he's strong. Uh, Jabari looks good. Uh, the other players on his team, I'm talking to the, about uh, the Bulls teammates, they keep telling me, I can't believe how big this guy is. I mean, he's got a big frame, and they just, they, I mean, from the first day we had media day, they're like, gosh, I can't believe how big this guy is. We played against him, but, you know, now seeing him every day, he's a big body. Well, I think also we forget uh, a lot of these great players in the NBA came out of college after one year. Yeah. You know, they're a 19-year-old kid. They got a lot of growth to go. Uh, you know, you get a sophomore coming out and playing the NFL, he's going to get just run right over. And so Jabari's matured. He's lifted weights, uh, good nutrition. 
you know, the the ACL injuries uh, clearly have derailed him a little bit, but he looks great. Uh, that strength in the leg is is great. He's having a great camp. Uh, obviously, that's a a risk factor uh, for injury or irritation. Uh, but you know, with his schedule, the excellent training staff that the Bulls have, and the and the medical team, they're going to watch him really carefully. But he's having a great camp. Let me take you back, uh, Doc. When you first started with the Bulls, how the sports medicine landscape has changed with uh, an NBA team like them over the years. Uh, I think one of the things in the landscape is social media. (laughs) Yeah. You know, the information gets out there very quick or the disinformation gets out there very quick. Uh, The key is still the principles and the philosophy of taking care of of an injury, and that is uh, identifying the injury, uh, being honest with the athlete and the the organization, treating it correctly, uh, and getting, getting out front of that, even if it's disappointing, like uh, you know, the star uh, White Sox pitcher who just had to have Michael Kopech. Yep, had to have uh, Tommy John surgery. It's very, very disappointing. But the key is identification of the injury, and then treating it appropriately. Uh, so I don't think that landscape has changed that much. But you know, nutrition, uh, advanced imaging. We had MRI 15 years ago, but I mean, it's it's so much clearer. It's like a digital camera. Is your digital camera better today than it was 15 years ago? Absolutely. You're, you're darn right it is. So, um, uh, you know, it's it's about the principles though of taking care of that injury. That really hasn't changed. Uh, but the you know the the demands of that athlete, the money involved, uh, and the return to sport are key. And so that we're in, involved in that environment. One final thought before we go to break in this segment, talking about uh, professional athletes and, and sports medicine. Uh, it takes me back to the Ryder Cup last week when Thomas Bjorn, the leading, uh, obviously the captain for the European team, uh, talked about why the success. You know, what? Who do you guys credit this to? And he said, and the other players said on the European team, the the physio guys, the nutritionist, the the, the massage therapists. Thomas Bjorn said it's amazing when he was playing back in the day and 10, 15, 20 years ago, and compared to these guys, these world-class athletes today, how different they are with their nutrition and the stretching that they do and the weightlifting and the recovery just after 18 holes of golf. He was really crediting those people, so it's interesting to see how the athlete has changed, even the golfer, right? It takes a village, um, and like we said, the, the, the money's huge. Uh, the motivation is is big in any sport, and so you have your team. You know your nutritionist, your your dietitian, your massage guy. Uh, that reco- I think you hit it on the head. The recovery is huge, and I think that may be the biggest difference is recovery of the athlete. Great stuff, Dr. Greg Nicholson filling in this week for Dr. Brian Cole. I'm Steve Cashel at Sports Medicine Weekly. Time for a break here. When we return, it's our Ask the Doctor segment still to come. we got the big Chicago Marathon coming up tomorrow here in the Windy City. We'll discuss the Chicago Marathon and the sports medicine angle. Stay with us. You're listening to Sports Medicine Weekly only on 670 The Score.